Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany, tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have a single cast from Ben Riach. This was distilled 2008, bottled 2022. I'm a little bit behind on this. There's a story I'm going to tell this. I'm ashamed almost of my story. All right, so this is uh, distilled at Ben Riach, and if you see here, we have whiskey and art. So a friend of mine, his name is David, and he actually um, paints. He loves going to Scotland. He loves painting distilleries. And on the back of the bottle, you see here a painting. Painting of the Ben Riach distillery. All right. So what we have here, we have um, barrel number or cast number MOS for Malts of Scotland from Paderborn here in Germany, an independent bottler, great. Thomas Eva, really enjoy his stuff. This is 22006. We have 289 bottles at 52.9% ABV. This was whiskey and art when taste becomes an experience. Whiskey base number 208885. The going price for this bottle was 99 euros. All right, so a single cast, cast strength Ben Liac from a Sherry Hogshead. Now I'm just gonna pour a little bit of this into this. What am I going to compare it to? I have said, at least for 2024, I want to do more standard comparisons. So I picked out something that at least over here in Europe, I'm gonna say at least Germany, is at the, at still readily available is the Glen Geary 15 year old sherry cask matured highland single malt scotch whiskey with 53.7% ABV. Now, I bought this exact bottle at the border shop up in Put Garden in Germany. The border shop is actually a um, it's like in a free trade zone, it's actually on the dock of the ferry that goes over to Denmark, up in Put Garden and the very north of Germany, northeast. And so they, I had to pay Danish krones, um, the price, but it was much cheaper than buying it in Germany. And so um, it was basically like a, like a tax-free type of border, what is it called, tribal retail type of moment. All right, so I'm paying 84, 85 euros for the Glen Geary, 15 years of age. Originally con conceived as a travel retail exclusive, um, it is available in very many shops in Germany. For the last six and a seven or eight, maybe nine years, I have been told this is going to be discontinued. And it's still available, still available, still available. I expect Glen Geary to be doing great things in the next five to ten years. Now imagine you wanted to distill today the whiskey that's going to be the next Glengarry 15. Which means you're distilling today for something that will be released in 2039. In 15 years from now, I'm over, I'm 70. Ouch. All right. And so that's, this was made 15 years ago. All right, so the, the 30 years between then and now, um, and there's between, oh, wait, I, I made it now, and I have it now ready, and I want to make it again. It's 15 years twice. That's just mind-blowing. All right, so um, this over here, as I said, um, 208885. This is either a 13 or 14-year-old whiskey, and 99 euros, this is... 85 years and a 15 year old whiskey with even more alcohol <laughs> which kind of hurts my heart but this is a single cask this is not all right we just look at the color difference this is a little darker than this the uh, Davi that actually picked out this thing he writes on whiskey base it looks a little bit more like a port it looks a little bit more like a wine barrel it even smells a little bit like that now it is a sherry hogshead, it is a sherry cask. We have vanilla, we have a little bit of those, a little bit of caramel, we have a little bit of vanilla cream pudding, we have a little bit of creme brulee in here, um, we have oak. I like the nose. The alcohol did not bother me from any point whatsoever. 
But if I go over to the Glengiri 15, now this is my friend. I, I, I know David. I've, I, we've gone out and eat. We've eaten with the wives together. We've we spent time together. I've, I've been at his booth. He's been at my booth at whiskey fairs. I actually, um, at one whiskey fair many years ago, I took over. It was one of the very first times I was behind the booth of a whiskey fair was at his booth actually there in um, Katken in Germany, in northeastern Germany, almost in the border of the Netherlands, where he had a little, he had a little break. Um, and I took over and I sold some of his products, and that was great. I mean, this guy I know I like, and yet this whiskey is good. It's not excellent. It's not fantastic. It's not awesome. It's good. It's all this is. This, the Glengarry 18, or 15, now on the nose, this smells better. They're gonna actually flip flop in a moment when I t taste them. I have a certain dislike of sulfur in my whiskey. So if you ever watch any of my videos, you know I have a problem with a whiskey, especially sherry cask, wine cask, have any type of sulfur in them. And they use the sulfur to make sure the whiskey casks do not actually turn bad, do not spoil, especially during transporting, during warmer months of the year, which would be anything from, let's say, April until October, all right? So it could be May until um, September, but those months of the year, transporting, wine casks, sherry casks, bourbon, no problem. There was enough alcohol in there. Here, it can always kind of spoil and turn into vinegar, which we don't want. <laughs> And sometimes if I have a Glengarry 15, I'm going to be like, this is the best whiskey in the world. And like two days later, I'll try the exact same bottle, exact same glass, exact same Jason, whiskey Jason. And I'll go, ooh, there's just too much sulfur in there. It's me. And some days I'm more oversensitive, hypersensitive, uber sensitive. And other days I'm less. And today seems to be a day where I'm less sensitive. And that's good. And I really, really like this. All right, so I get a little bit of a, of a sour, sour grape, sour something here. All right, especially when I go back from this. All right, cheers. The acidity is the first thing that really caught my palate. It's like, wait, there's a lot of acid in here. It's, for my personal preference, a little bit too much. And then there's a nice little bit of oak. There's a nice little bit of green apple. There's a nice little bit of red raspberry, almost a strawberry, almost a, let's go, forget the strawberry. Raspberry plum is what I'm getting here. Um, it's the alcohol perfectly intertwined with everything that should be there, but the acidity is a little bit of a put off for me. Um, is that Ben Liach typical? I'm going to say no. I've had 10, 20, maybe 15, uh, 10, 15, 20 different Ben Liach, some castering, some core range. I don't think acidity was ever a problem. And that's really the question is, where did this come from? I don't know. All right, so I don't know if this was um, the acidity is from the cask, if the acidity is from the distillate. I really don't know. I do know that this is the standard malt of, of Scotland label, very well glued here. And I do know that I've seen this painting in real life, and it's so much more of an impressive painting when you see it... Um, it's five, let's say four feet by three feet, maybe two and a half. A beautiful, beautiful painting. It's really impressive. I cannot afford that painting. I don't know. I think it was 600, 700, 800 euros. Could have been more, could have been a little bit less. I don't know. There's 200 hours of, of um, actual painting uh, going into a painting like that. Um, could be a little, could be 80, could be two, uh, 150 hours. But even if I just went from a normal price of minimum wage over here, like 15 euros per hour, I, I can't afford someone painting a picture. Not of this quality and not of this, um, I'm going to use the word magnificence. 
I really do enjoy that. But there were other bottles that have used the labels and used the paintings of David, 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 um, here and there just so much. But there was more um, surface area of the bottle covered by the label. It was just beautiful. Whiskey and art. This is a C. The acidity almost makes it a C minus. Value for money, 100 euros um, recommended retail price. For a 13, maybe 14-year-old Benaliach and cast strength. See, see, it's not bad, but I just, just, I just don't get the, the nose is okay, but the palate just doesn't, just doesn't connect with me. On the contrary, the Glenarchy, the Glenarchy, the Glengiri, ooh, that was a Freudian slip there. Mmm. Mmm. I get a leather. Wow. I get a dark, deep richness. I get the oak. Wow. This is today a excellent whiskey. This is a B plus whiskey in my book. Maybe even A minus. The nose, no. The nose, I have a little bit of a season type of syrup sherry I'm not a big fan of. But the the the, the robust the robustness of the Glengiri with the sherry cast just mingled together to create that leather, the oak, the thickness and the depth here that I really, really prefer. This is an awesome whiskey for the price of 85 euros. 15 years of age, as I said, 53.7% uh, ABV. If you can get it, there is a, t a tad bit of sulfur in there, but I can overlook it with the dark, rich leatherness of the woodiness of the sherryness of this whiskey. So, my question of the day is what bottles do you know that have a wonderful hand painted? Um, piece of art on them that have inspired you to buy this. My next question is, what bottle of Malts of Scotland have you ever had that were probably very good up to maybe even awesome? And my last question is, if none of that, what is your favorite Glengiri? Is it the Founders Reserve? Is it the 12? Is it the 15? Definitely the 15 for me. Is it part of the Renaissance collection that they put out once with 15, 16, 17, 18 year old whiskeys? There was, a, there was a wine cask finish from um, Glen Geary. I expect goodness from them. So, thank you very much for watching, liking, subscribing, telling others, and Whiskey Jason here. See you real soon. Bye-bye.